Hey Jason Phillips from Ottawa Braze. I'm down in southern Ohio today inspecting a 63 split window for a client of ours looking to purchase it out of state. Sebring silver car with black vinyl trim. Let's start up underneath the vehicle. Steel headlight bucket car, not fiberglass. That was in the later 63s. Original grill's in good shape with one broken tab up inside, but no obvious other collision damage seen underneath the vehicle. Frame rails look good up in the corners. You can see the bonding strips on both sides. Here's the uh, left side. A few uh, nicks down low in the fiberglass, nothing too unusual. Uh, heading up underneath the car. Original style springs on these drums. Uh, original rivets, uh, or at least riveted style ball joints uh, present up top. Spindles don't appear to be restored. Uh, control arms don't appear to be restored. They've been repainted black a time or two. Bushings are in decent shape up and down with a little bit of crackage present. Shocks have been serviced. Uh, nothing different over here. No uh, tears or rips in those die holes in the front and no uh, wrinkles seen in the spring pockets. Again, no indication of uh, any uh, frontal collision damage. There's the bonding strips up underneath the front end. Still looking pretty good. This is a uh, power steering, power brakes, power windows, uh, 63, signal seeking radio. Uh, that power assist unit has some uh, grease buildup and a little bit of seepage, but nothing on the ground that I can see that's been gathered since we were here. Engine looks like it may have been out at some point. No major leak coming off that front main. A little bit of a weeping on the oil pan. But no big flowing issues. 378-2870 cast block was the only casting they used in 1963. The uh, ca canister style oil filter with oil filler up front, 327. Had to snake in a scope to get a reading on the block casting date, A143, I think is what it was, January 14th, 1963. Uh, car was built third week of February, so it precedes the build date of the vehicle nicely. These uh, frame rails and dog legs have been uh, repainted and coated perhaps with some uh, uh, textured style undercoat and paint over the years. Car has a solid appearance uh, for a non-frame off vehicle. Little weep holes are still open in the bottoms to express the water. Tubs appear to be in pretty good shape. Didn't see any cracks in the forward footwell tubs or the pressure of the feet from a collision might have cracked the tub. Don't see that at all. See some of the original yellow coloring on the fiberglass floors prior to them being painted black. So structurally underneath the car looks nice and solid. Aluminized exhaust uh, got replaced and it's showing some uh, oil stains kind of burn on from previous use. Don't see anything wet coming down. I think the transmission's been out and serviced while we're here. Unit's been painted. non-traditional gray color. Exhaust is mounted in a challenging way. Got a reading off the pan only. T0121D is what it appears to look like. Car, according to the trim tag, was uh, built in the third week 
1963, February, and we got a reading on that uh, rear end. 0B2563, so February 5th. We're okay with that date. Some of the rear end uh, rebuild has taken place stock style uh, lower control arms that weren't painted before they were put on. They could stand to be sanded down and repainted. A replacement uh, steel spring and uh, stabilizer bushings, trailering arms have been replaced with aftermarket units. The brakes look like they were all serviced here in the back. Components look pretty clean. I don't think the rear end's ever been out of the vehicle. I would be surprised if it were. A little bit of clunk when we put it into gear. I got a little bit of wear. A little bit of cracking in that rear uh, bushing. A little bit of age showing in the rear um, mounting. Rubber bushings above. Spare tire cover is in place. The cover may have been changed or at least repainted. And uh, we do have an old bias ply spare in there. Up here in the uh, right rear wheel well, you see bonding strips. Bonding strip, that is. Strips plural, end to end, both sides. Tire uh, tread wear pattern would suggest a little bit of a negative camber. We got some thin tread on the insides of both of the rear tires. And uh, these are non adjustable arms, so. So there you go. Up underneath the rear bumper, we don't really have any evidence of uh, collision damage. Original bushings are in sufficient shape for survivors. That about wraps up the underbody. We're going to get her down, take her outside, go through some of the paint body and interior underneath the hood, and then take her for a quick test drive. The tri spinner later. Uh, hubcaps, they're in pretty good shape, no major curb scuffing. Some touch-ups on the steel wheels over the years. They all appear to be in about that condition. A little bit of stone splash and contamination behind the uh, rear wheels. Got a little crack in this bumper support. A little crack right here, and then one under the tail light. Might have been bumped a long time ago, nothing major little touch up down low on both dog legs on either side. A little uh, crack in the paint there. A little spot of thin paint right there. Otherwise the silver uh, metallic flowed out very nicely. Sebring silver. Code 941. Uh, the body and paint aren't without some general uh, wear flaws. I'm here along the bottom of the right hand side. A little bit of touch ups down there low on the dog leg as well. A little less stone splash on this side. And this area of the dog leg has been uh, a little brush touched up a little there. Same up here in the front wheel opening. That's about it. We're going to bring her down, get her outside. A small age crack in the license plate light. I haven't had this thing split on this in 30 years that I've been here. We're going to do a cold start on the motor and get it out of the bay here. Engine's at uh, 101, 102. Go ahead and fire it up, will you? We did have to run it for just a second to bring it inside. Rev it up a little bit. It's like a little bit of a little bit of rich, rich burn, maybe. But to give you an idea, outside right now, it's a. Uh, pavement's 118 so the car's not the car's not warmed up yet we'll take a look at that when we get down the road keep that tiny bit of exhaust leak I'm hearing might be coming from this uh, tube that's not permanently mounted in the manifold we'll wander around the outside of the car before we take off on a drive here I gotta find someone to assist me a little over 45, 50 pounds of uh, cold oil pressure. Tax hooked up. A little bit of a bounce there. Car showing 56,597 on the clock. Charging. 
Gas gauge looks to be working. Clock does not appear to be working. Headlights look like they're rolling up and down as they should. Steel bucket car, if I didn't mention that. And the uh, horn works. Turn signals are flashing. Fan control is working. You can hear the motor whining. Cables are... There we go. Sliding freely. Fan motor's making a little noise. Radio's definitely coming on. I don't know if anybody is uh, broadcasting on AM anymore. I think there might be a couple people out there still. Power windows go up and down real nice. Wipers appear to be sweeping. Washer squirter buttons making contact, nothing coming up, but I don't know how important that really is in a car like this. Correct for 63 is the uh, gated shift for the power glide. Correct for 63 is the uh, uh, Seek, Seek style radio and the plastic knobs on the shifter and the um, window regular or uh, door pulls inside this car seems to have its uh, original interior largely a little bit of chipping going on on the uh, door panels and a little bit of vinyl uh, seeping out there but no big cuts or tears uh, to be witnessed some typical heel scratches on the sill plates at one time I do believe the car was painted red with a very little bit of indication of that a little bit of wear on that chrome plated seat frame hinge and a little bit of tear in the bolster area of these very original OEM seat covers uh, correct for 63 are the ventilated uh, seats and early cars got the original um, one year only the mid-year cars had adjustable stanchions front and rear on the seat so the whole seat could be adjusted up for a taller driver. That uh, adjustable seat feature was eliminated sometime in the 63 production uh, era. I don't know exactly when it happened. Carpet kit looks like it was changed. Uh, correct for 63 glove box door with the plastic cover. And uh, I noticed inside we have, that works okay by the way, we have an original owner's protection plan book um, showing the original dealer where it came out of Holland, Michigan. That's kind of cool. And uh, it does state the VIN there. Nothing else was filled out in the book other than the delivery date was uh, February 22nd, 1963. Just uh, about a year shy of my birthday in February of 64. Dash coves are in nice shape. There's no heat cracks going on. Uh, Early 63s had the painted surround here around the radio bezel and clock, and this is a later design with the vinyl wrapped portion of the dash there. There's a spring popping through the passenger seat. You don't want to catch your you-know-what on that. But the seats are still uh, comfortable, and uh, they feel good. They feel nice. I think the uh, headliner panel in this got pulled down and repainted or possibly replaced carpet trim in the back is in real nice shape. I'll go through my notes here, show you what we discovered on this inspection. This is a pre-purchase inspection being performed for a client of ours who was out of state and wasn't interested in flying here to see the car. He wanted to have me come and check it out. If you need service like this, I can be of service. 800-301-3886. The client will be able to uh, freeze frame this video and look at these written comments about the flaws, chips, nicks, scratches, touch-ups, etc. that are in the exterior body. That being said, uh, that paper looks like a lot of information, but the car actually looks pretty good. No real um, giant concerns, you know, it uh, presents well. Trim tag information, VIN information there. 
according to uh, the uh, trim tag, it was the third week in February build. Uh, 63s didn't have a, a day attached to the build month, just a week. That didn't happen until I think 64. Um, 0205 SD, that's a 300 horse attached to a Power Glide car. Uh, built in the first week of February, which aligns nicely with the car's uh, build build date. Um, these Power Glide cars, they're tough to get a read on the engine casting number and the date code because of the uh, brackets that hold the kickdown linkage. They're in the way. So I had to get out my little uh, remote um, camera scope and dig in to find that information. It does have a correct alternator. Uh, it's got the later tri-spinner hubcaps as you can see, uh, vinyl, I noted that on the dash, glove box door is right, uh, there's our distributor number, our steering gear number, and a host of other information that will be provided to our uh, customer. Uh, so finishing up on the interior, a little bit of red was apparent, could have been primer I thought maybe on that hinge, that's probably hard to get a visual on, I've got still photos of it client will get about 250 still photos. We got some scratches on that original sill, rubber seals on the doors and the uh, uh, cowl and A-pillar appear to have been changed. Uh, belt molding seals were not. These uh, trim seals were not pulled prior to repaint so we got a little bit of edge uh, peeling where the paint butted up to the molding. This is the spot right here we have a little red left over I don't think it's primer, and uh, it's underneath. This uh, must have been chipped away when the door made contact with the um, with the post. Looking under the seal, there you can see just a little bit of hint of overspray. So overall, the car has a really nice uh, reflective appearance. The paint uh, that was executed on the vehicle. Uh, was done nicely. The silver flowed out real nice. I don't see any color mismatch. I got a little touch up right there. Got just a little swell right here on the back of the uh, sail panel. A little touch up here on the door, probably from opening in, bumping into somebody there. The feature line here, the door is slightly lower than the quarter panel feature line. We'll make sure that's closed all the way. Split windows never were beautiful when it came to uh, lining up the, the door frames to the top of the car. Those look pretty decent, really. You got to give and take on these. If you want the tops of the doors to look great and be nice and flat, sometimes you got to give up a little elsewhere. And uh, right here, it looks like there might have been a little bit of work to uh, that line's not quite as straight as the. Uh, driver's side. And the door's pretty tight in the back. Could stand to go forward maybe an eighth. Original silk screen in the right corner. The windshield's pretty faded but you can read it. A little bit of tiny, tiny stone splash in the windshield. A dozen or so places. No major uh, big chips or big cracks seen. Most states would allow that windshield. Bumpers show pretty nicely little hairline type of scratch right there, a little bit of chrome plating fatigue right there. Rear bumpers look a little bit better than the front. Car's period straight looking down both sides. Not blocked out excessively, just good for the period, good for the look. 63 was the first year you could actually get knockoff wheels, although none were actually delivered, confirmed delivered on any 63 Corvettes. Dealers sold them over the counter, but they were having trouble with the aluminum uh, leaking air on the old bias ply tires. Hood sits nice and flat. 63 only. Faux scoops. Uh, that aluminum trim is there and in pretty nice shape with just some general fading and wear. It's a replacement mirror with a longer stem. That changed somewhere in the middle of the 63 production era. Uh, that year as well. Mirror holds itself in place nice. Little bit of overspray on the edge of these original rubber seals on the vents. A couple little swells there. 
little bubble there. I think the trim is a mix of old and new. A couple small hairline scratches in the original glass in the back, but nothing horrible. A few buffing or polishing marks on the trim around the windows. Original silk screen date codes present. Replacement gas door. This is the early design with the nylon, uh, the nylon wheel as opposed to the nylon slide-in alignment uh, deal. Uh, these internal uh, window channel guides seals could stand to be serviced and changed. They look a little bit rough. Headlights are working. Uh, tail lights appear to be working. We'll try the turn signals when I get some assistance driving the car, which we're going to go get right now. And right, there's the left. Or, uh... And there we go, there's our right front loose connection. And there's our uh, brights. Thank you. A uh, well I'm at it, quick view of the engine bay, power brake, uh, single reservoir master cylinder, period correct standard uh, power steering, five blade clutch fan, 62M date code on the radiator, Apple 19.3 on the intake, chrome shielding's in place, J shields are in place. We recorded the exhaust manifold numbers earlier. Um, general uh, wear and some repaint work on the upper control arms. Uh, period correct battery and cables. It's a good driver quality engine bay. Late 62 day code on the Harrison overflow bottle. Transmission fluid was clean and up to snuff. It didn't smell burnt. Uh, oil was uh, clean and full at the proper level. New nylon bushings and a seal on the hood. No evidence of uh, collision damage up here at the front uh, mounting points. As I mentioned earlier, there's no Obvious damage, bonding strips are all looking good throughout the underbody of the vehicle. Let's go for a ride. Alright, take it off. There's first gear. Obviously we shifted the second speedometer's working, tack is operating. Oil pressure's holding up at about 40, 45 pounds. Temp's just starting to come up to, uh, up to temp. Sebring Silver with an original black vinyl interior. The uh, trip odometer does appear to be turning, operating. Heavy 5 o'clock traffic right now. We can't get too fast, but uh, rolling down the road nicely. They're liking it. <laughs> Hard not to like a Silver 63 split window. Alright, fire drill. I'm going to drive Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. Pre-purchase inspection. Well, Alright, back out into traffic. Behind the wheel. Shifting out about 25 to 2800 Rs. Feels good. I've got just one finger on the steering wheel, if you can see that. 
steering wheel's not bumping or bouncing at all. Car goes down the road nice and straight. Steering wheel's aligned nicely. I'm gonna step on the brakes with my uh, hand off the wheel. Pedal feels good. Hard to really let go of the wheel in this kind of traffic, so uh, I'm really not gonna. But I can't feel any aggressive pull one way or the other. If anything, it maybe draws a little bit to the crown of the road. Um, if you want to go on the speedway here, yeah. let everybody go past you. All right. It's kind of a racetrack here. Understood. As far as when we're... Yeah. All right, back out on the road here again. Transmission shifts nice. Assuming you wanted to stay going around the block. <laughs> Just want to keep driving, man. Well, yeah, the uh, factory air conditioning does appear to be operating as intended. Wrap up on a test drive. We're still uh, 180 degrees, running nice and cool, still holding uh, 35 to 38 pounds of oil pressure. 1963 uh, split window. Coves were in real nice shape on the dash. Carpet kit's been changed. Original survivor door panels to recap look nice and survivor vinyl seats look nice. Uh, the silver paint the application has uh, pretty high integrity. Good reflection. Minimal flaws pointed out during the inspection but uh, the car's a good looking car. Could hear a few clunks and bumps uh, going down the road a little bit of pull in the brakes to the left and uh, those original bushings in the back of the car are probably lending to some of the uh, clunking or motion maybe of the rear end. Some of it you saw was uh, serviced and uh, they're a continual project. car seems to sit level. Alright, wrapping up an in-depth pre-purchase inspection for a client getting his report all done on video with some uh, bullet point notes that you saw a vision of earlier. This client will get this information delivered to him privately first. This uh, video won't be out for anybody else to see until he has made his decision on this car. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. If you need inspection service like this, 800-301-3886. Thanks for hanging out and watching. Have a great day. Fun day driving a 63 split window. Peace.